Oh, okay, he's Lars to go first. first. All right, let's see how it goes for Lars here. Looks at his hand. I know I saw a copy of yep. Infinite Impermanence, so that will be useful. He's going to start with Pressure Planet Race Off. Mid, but Ash Blossom. Immediately from Jeremy, playing at Lightning Speed. Triple Tactics Talent. I think he has to draw. I don't see any monsters in his hand. It looks like he is going to draw two cards. One, two. Does he get to that Kashiri Unicorn? That is, looks like a lot of spell cards. I see an Infinite Impermanence. I see an enemy controller. I think I see another enemy controller, a Kashiri Theosis. Does he have that Kashiri monster he needs to get the ball rolling? I think those are five spells in an Impermanence. Looks like he doesn't have any Kastira cards. That Ash Blossom and Joy String going to be enough to stop Lars in wow, his tracks oh despite goodness. drawing the two, triple ta tri two cards from uh, the Triple Spanbox. Tactics talent. Yep. Jeremy yep. making that heads up play. He knows awesome. that the Kastira matchup, you know, that strategy is so reliant on finding its monsters, but there's not that many actual monsters. You want to cut it off in any way possible if they don't immediately open with those monsters themselves. The Reach. Unicorn met with Infinite Impermanence here. Yep, after the activated effect uh, of trying to add a spell, and yeah. now it looks like Jeremy oh. has the Kastira Rise Heart in the hand, going to be able to special summon it, going to banish a Kastira card from the deck to banish the top three cards of Lars' deck face down. Looks like he's going to be banishing a copy of Kastira Fenrir. If Jeremy has a copy of Birth in his hand, this could really seal the deal. Out of a birth. And there is Kastira yeah. Birth. Perfect. Doesn't, Be careful. He doesn't, not I was going to say the same thing. Doesn't activate the infinite permanent zone. Perfect. He's going to be able to special summon that banished Kastira Fenrir. Now all he has to do is potentially just get a copy of Scarefly Kastira, and this could end the same way Lars has been able to end all those matches before. Just attacking for game. That shows why power, yeah. the deck of uh, Kastira is so powerful. Going second. Taking a moment to consider options. It is a second copy of infinite permanence. I believe he's using that on the Fenrir. Now... Even though those are powerful interruptions, those monsters are still there. There's still so much pressure. Lars is down two cards, not being able to remove those bodies. Kastira Birth is up there. Jeremy is holding all the cards right now. What do you think about using the infinite permanence on the Kastira Rise Heart, potentially? Do you think there's a reason why he held it off and to use it for the Fenrir? Maybe just hoping that his opponent didn't have uh, something like Birth? I think, yeah, Lars used that. He is really far behind right now. If Jeremy has access to Kastira Birth, He's, there's really a low um, chance of winning in the first place. You want to try to cut him off as much as possible and uh, keep as many resources for the kickback. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. I mean, Jeremy's still sitting on a copy of Pot of Prosperity in his hand, I see. And it looks like Jeremy's going to go into battle phase. Attack with Kastir Unicorn. It's going to be an effect negated, so he's not going to be able to look at that extra deck thanks to infinite impermanence. Yeah, attack and attack, so. yep, same thing with Fenrir. Fenrir will not be able to go after that pressure planet. Should be a 16, right? Maybe. Hmm. That's why that the a double 16, infant right? parents holding yeah. to make sure those monster effects don't deal with anything on his field. Here from Lars. Now Jeremy, after he's got his damage in, he might go into main phase two to use something like Pot of Prosperity since he won't have to have that damage. Uh, the the imperms are right here, right? Okay. Okay. Just clarifying where those zones are. Two of them, yeah, you don't want to place into, so he's going to use Pot of Prosperity in that second spell and trap card zone. Banishing one, two... Three. Imagine it has to be four, five, six. Yeah, I don't see why not at this point. Five, six. Yeah. What is he looking for? Just probably any of those powerful quick play spell cards, potentially a Book of Moon, maybe a Forbidden Lance. Yeah, something to disrupt Lars if he happens oh, yeah. to draw something to make a comeback. I'm sorry, it's his habit. There's a Pressure Planet of Zone, a Dark Hole, a Kastir Theosis. Main deck Dark Hole is pretty cool. Oh, there's a lot of solid options here. Maybe just getting more resources with the Pressure Planet is good enough. Cars in here? Maybe I going for Theosis just to put additional bodies on the field? Yeah, I imagine. I think, I think it's between Theosis and oh. Birth for follow up. Or, yeah. or the Pressure Planet. Yeah, getting another copy of Birth is always strong. I imagine Jeremy's going to be leaving up the Fenrir and the Unicorn here. Uh, I'll add Planet. It does go for the Pressure I'll Planet pressure race planet. off. Yeah. Pressure Planet, when it's activated, lets you add any Kastira monster from your deck to your hand. It also gives all your monsters on the field 100 attack and defense for every different attribute on the field. I wonder if Jeremy is going to commit it now or just keep it to make a choice based on what happens on the following turn. Oh, he's going to use it now immediately. Pressure Planet Race off. Let's see what he decides to add. Maybe a copy of Kastira Fenrir. Looks like he's thinking about Scareclaw Kastira. He could easily just extend further at this point, knowing that Lars doesn't have any actual resources. There's no Kastira monsters in his hand. He would have to top deck one. Is it a unicorn he's adding? It looks like it. I can see it between the shuffles. Yep, that is a Kastira unicorn. Being able to normal summon that maybe in the following turns off the Kastira Birth. I think he still has his normal summon this turn even. That's true. Uh, yeah, because he, he used the special of the Rise Heart and used the Birth on the Fenrir. But uh, he probably wants to save it for the next turn. Yeah, I wonder, like, what Xyz monsters are you going to go into right now? Are you going to summon the Shangri-Ra? 
Oh, the flare metal. Red eyes flare metal. He's putting the pressure. Uh, Lars only has 1,600 life points that's, remaining. That's three activations. He's going to need to do something to get rid of this red eyes flare metal before he can really jump back into this game. That's cool. I love me some red eyes flare metal here in the finals of the North American World Championship qualifier. Definitely not something you see every day. So there even are some differences even in this Kashir matchup where you expect to see almost all the same cards. Yeah, Jeremy's showing why he's here in the finals. You can't just play standard. Sometimes you got to have some surprises for your opponents along the way. Lars really contemplating his options. He has to be really careful how he sequences his next plays. He only has so many activations to work with. Taking a moment to consider his options. He definitely didn't have the start that he wanted. I mean, if Jeremy didn't have that Ash Blossom and Joy of Springs, things could be going differently here. But it looks like he did draw Kashira yep. Fenrir. He's going to go straight into battle phase to try and force out uh, the effect to banish the, the flare metal. Crash with the Fenrir. Both right sides pumping them up by 100 each. Oh, but then there's his follow-up, which is going to be met with enemy, enemy controller. controller. He's going to take it. Lars is not out just yet. It's still in the battle phase, so he can attack with the Fenrir. So that's 56. Now um, Lars has the ability to go after any of his Kashira monsters oh, yeah, yeah, in his yeah. deck, being able to extend into a rank 7 play of his own. And I believe, actually, yeah. that is a Theosis in his hand. He's able to extend into this full combo here. And he make a comeback. He has two cards in, right? Yep. This Kashira matchup can be so swingy. She's going to use the effect of Kashira Finner here in main phase 2. Enemy controller just <laughs> so incredible in the mirror match. I love that they're main decking copies of enemy controller. We've seen a lot of players main decking three copies. One of my favorite cards of all times when it's just so versatile. Yeah, you, the heads of play also by Lars just keeping it in his hand. Did not set it with those infinite permanences. He did not want to risk having that enemy controller being removed at all because he knew that's what he was going to need in the resource battle to crack back in whatever field that Jeremy needs. He knew that he wasn't going to be able to win this without drawing a monster himself. And Fenrir was a perfect one, able to bait out both responses from Jeremy and then take control using Jeremy's own monster. Yeah, when you don't draw so great, you can't just be frustrated at your hand. You have to think about what can I do from this position? Can I play to my outs? What card can I draw and how can I play to my hand to best suit that perfect card that I can draw? So now Lars taking a moment to look at his extra deck. Being rewarded for his foresight here, looking towards his outs, finding one of them. And now he just needs to be able to contemplate through his plays and figure out what the best end field is, knowing that Jeremy has a unicorn in his hand, as well as the birth already on the field. So he's going to use Kastira Theosis here, targeting the Fenrir to special summon a Kastira monster with a different attribute. He's going to summon Kastira Unicorn, be able to use that effect to add Kastira Birth. Which monster did Lars add off the effect of Fenrir at this point? Was it another copy of Unicorn? It was Unicorn, yep. So one of the two cards in hand is Unicorn. So Lars is probably going to be looking to get this birth off the field. Sorry. Lars also has a copy of Tactics still, but unfortunately all those effects were activated in the battle phase. Yep, got to be in the main phase. Unless it's Triple Tactics Thrust, which could be any time in the turn. Looks like he's going to be using the Rise Heart here. He's going to be able to banish one of those Kastira cards from the deck, potentially going for a monster here to be able to special summon off birth. There is already a Fenrir in the grave, but... You know, maybe wanting access to a different one. We see Lars is on a heavier uh, Kashira engine. He can go for something along the lines of Kashira Ogre. He is thinking about his options here. He's going to use that Rise Heart effect. Let's see what he decides to banish. He is eyeing that Kashira Ogre, as you mentioned. Ogre's pretty cool that you add a Kashira Trap card. Usually when we see players playing Kashira Ogre, that also means they're playing Kashira Preparations as well. Yeah, you might also be attempting to use its effect on the field. Not really something that a lot of people pay attention to, but being able to look at the top five cards of your opponent's deck and banishing one of them, you get a lot of knowledge. You just get to see, one, the card that they're drawing, and two, just what kind of cards they're playing. True, true. Now Lars overlaying the three level seven monsters for Kastira. I think he's going for Rise Heart, but I was wondering Rise Heart. if he would even uh, want to go for something along the lines of the Dark Arm Dragon, just being able to go after the birth there anyway. No, I this, think this is fine. Yeah, being able to set up, uh, maybe potentially going after the cards that he lost. Yeah, he's uh, essentially, oh, he was losing a lot of monsters, it seems, from the previous Rise Hearts from Jeremy, so he wants to be able to get access to those back. All right, here comes Kastira Birth. He's going to use the effect to spell summon that Kastira Ogre that he banished the Kastira Rise Heart. Ogre Effect's going to activate, and he's going to add that Kastira Trap from the deck to the hand. I imagine it's going to be Kastira Preparations. Yep, he's going, uh, unless he sided it out, maybe. It could have been banished from the Rise Heart, or he could have sided it out. Nope, there's the Preparations. I'm going to grab Preparations here. Preparations offering another form of interruption by going after those banished Fenrirs and Unicorns. Lars 
taking something to look at everything, make sure he knows all of his resources that he has available to him. He knows that Jeremy does have that unicorn in the hand, so he's going to have to deal with that. Pass turn. And it looks like he's going to hold the preparation in the hand. Passing turn with no Draw. actual interruptions currently. Jeremy having unicorn already Stand to be able on. to start the play, yeah. I, want, I don't know if a single yeah. Rizard is going to be good enough. He held the preparation Special. in hand. Perfect. Yep. So Jeremy's going to special summon the Kashir Unicorn, use its effect to add a Kashir spell card from the deck to the hand. Lara's only sitting on 1,600 life points. Jeremy just needs to find a way to do a little bit of damage, and he'll be up one game here in the finals That's of the right. North American World Championship Qualifier. Grabbing another copy of Kashir Birth. This has been as possible. You are able to just summon monsters from your graveyard or your banished every single turn. So a little stronger than uh, Theosis because you're thinking more of a long game. And is this the Kashira Ogre effect? Yep, that is the Kashira Ogre looking at the top five, being able to banish one of them face down. Um, Dark Hole? Yeah, getting rid of the Kashira Skripa. Okay, that makes that, sense. That actually makes uh, probably a big difference here. I mean, Kashira is able to access those again via a Rise Heart, but it's not going to be accessible assuming that Jeremy only plays the one copy, which most people do. Very true. Oops. Now this is going to trigger a Rise Heart since the card was banished. He's trying to get to that, those three materials, so he'll be able to fight off of Jeremy's push here. Grabbing another berth here. And he does, it looks like a triple tactics talent. Oh, it is like, a triple tactics talent, yeah. and he's going to be able to use that to take the Kashira Rise Heart. The talent is going to get banished, and it's going to trigger the Rise Heart to attach a material. Oh, yeah. I imagine he's either going to go for something along the lines of Theosis, if it didn't want banished, or just maybe get that Scare Claw back. I don't know if Lars is going to be able to really put up any form of defense. That Kashira Arizard is already putting up like, uh, most of the damage necessary. Yeah, Lars is going to use the birth effect since uh, the spell card resolved. He's going to banish three cards from Jeremy's hmm? graveyard. Okay. Uh, Rizard. And then Rizard will just trigger again, uh, attaching one more card. Probably that Scareclaw Kashira. Or oh, I forgot he Pot of Prosperity, so he has plenty of cool targets under there as well. But this is. Lars is a rise heart, but I don't think he's going to get it back. Yeah, I think if, if, if the game is ending this turn, it will and turn into a Divine Arsenal yeah. Zeus. Yep. More materials, the better. Uh, Looks like he's make, thinking about banish. using the rise heart. So he's going to banish three to banish the ogre. That's going to trigger a rise heart to attach another material underneath it. I'm just getting. That's one. What do you think? I was asking Amina to see yours. Which other two? Hmm? Which of those two you're seeing? Because that one's yours, and that one might be mine, because I attached one from the back. Oh, they're just clarifying which cards belong to who. There's been a lot of cards going over. That is the Lars's card. Yeah. <laughs> this uh, is a good thing to deal with now before it becomes a problem, games two and three. And yep. that is enough to go into game two. Jeremy Mitchell. Be potentially the last game of our tournament here. Jeremy starting off with one of the best cards you can start with. It's Pot of Prosperity. We'll have to see if Lars has something like Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I see he has Cosmic Cyclone. It's like Infinite Impermanence. Maybe Forbidden Lands. Pot of Prosperity being so ridiculously six. strong in the Kashira deck. Not only being able to access six cards from the top of your deck, which is something the deck desperately needs when it oh. has so few monsters, that, uh, but also putting those cards banished that are accessible via a Rise Heart, giving it that additional protection. It's so good. He has pretty much anything he wants here. That is literally every option in the deck. <laughs> <laughs> if he already has all the starter cards he needs, he can go after that Ash Blossom Joy String. Is that Theosis? I'll add, or is uh, Theosis. That, is that is Theosis. Interesting that all the ones, it means he probably already has a Pressure Planet Ray Soth in the hand, I believe. I'm sorry. <laughs> or at the very happen. least, just I'm having sorry. Unicorn. But that just means Unicorn can go after Kashira Birth, and having Kashira Birth for the remainder of the game is Special. what you ideally want. Yeah. All right, looks like he is going to lead off with Kashira Fenrir here. So he's going to Special Win Fenrir to add Kashira Rise Heart to the hand. We'll likely see the follow-up of the activation of Theosis. Going to be able to summon Unicorn to get that Birth. There it is. Yeah. All right, Theosis is going to special summon Kashira Unicorn. Uh, Fet Unicorn? Yeah. Unicorn going to be able to grab, assumingly, that copy of Kashira Birth here. And again, this is that point. Where does Jeremy want to go from here? Does he want to just leave up these two? Does he want to come in more to the field? Looks like Jeremy wasn't actually prepared to go first this game. There's still a copy of Darkhold, unless he chooses to keep that in, uh, because he knows that monsters are constantly being removed from the field back and forth here, as we saw in game one. The field swings so often, maybe Darkhold is one of those cards that he uses to get back into the game. Yeah, and I think there's a chance Lars chooses to go first again, so he probably kept that in mind as well. Oh, actually, I 
I'm sure that Jeremy was prepared to go first. There's a copy of Eradicator in his hand. <laughs> he, was, he probably prepared for both instances, not knowing. But imagine after seeing Lars lose game one, after choosing to go first, you can kind of guess he's going to choose to go second. Right. And now he's going to overlay the two sevens for Kashira Shangri Ira. And now he's going to use the effect of Kashira Rise Heart to banish Kashira Big Bang. Yep, opting to ignore a potential Nibiru, the Primal Being, going for that wide play, setting up the uh, Shangri-Ra on the field, as well as the uh, likely three material Arise Heart by being able to get this monster back from Big Bang from under the Shangri-Ra, overlink for another copy um, of Shangri-Ra, and then all three of those Shangri into Arise Heart. So I'll lock this on. All right, so shangri was going to lock the second main monster zone over there, and it's going, the Big Bang will detach material, he can either add it to his hand and then special summon it, or just keep it in the hand. Be contemplating his option there. Looks I like think he's just going to keep it in his hand. Okay. I imagine he wants to be summoning this body because he wants to use that Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Um, I'll add it to hand. Oh, he's, he's choosing to keep it in hand. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes, of course. He's not going to commit resources to the Arise Heart because he can just use it immediately for the Eradicator and hold back as much resources as he can. Likely will not even set the birth here. Looks like he's going to set Book of Moon, uh, Epidemic Eradicator. Oh, and in the third set, oh, probably the Dark Hole. Mm, probably. Keeping Birth and Fenrir, and, oh, setting the Birth as well. Uh, pass turn. All Hoping right. that Lars does not have a copy of Evenly Matched. All right, okay, maybe he does. He does have that Cosmic Cyclone, so he's playing around. And here comes Epidemic Eradicator Virus. Uh, oh. Calling spells. It looks like that's a lot of spells. Is he going to chain that Cosmic Cyclone from his hand? He, he, he kind of has to. Lars thinking. Doing this in the standby or in the draw phase, rather, so Shangri-Ra can still summon in the standby phase and be safe from those copies of Triple Tactics Talents. Large change, Cosmic yeah. Cyclone targeting. Ooh, the Book of Moon. That's the one he wants to hit. That is a good one. If he has a monster, no. it's pretty good. Oh, and he, but he has a Fenrir. Oh, he has Fenrir and Infinite Permanence. This is something. He lost a lot of cards, though. What was the other? So Fenrir can go Book a long way. Hitting that Book of Moon is good. Uh, damn it. At this point, I don't think Jeremy wants to use that Shangri-Ra anymore, because if he activates it, oh, yeah. he will simply be allowing uh, Lars to be able to use the Infinite Permanence, summon the Fenrir, and go immediately into an Arise on top of it. Yeah, I don't think he's going to activate the Shangri-Ra either. Um, he's thinking. He sets our Dark Hole in Birth. He can get extremely punished here if he chooses Perfect. to activate the Shangri-Ra. Lars not in a bad shape. Yep, not choosing to use it, but unfortunately, unit, like, the Fender is able to get through all by itself. He's going to be able to go for a copy of Rise Heart, banish any card from his deck, be able to go into a Ring 7, just attack into the Shangri-Ra, yeah, right? and then still be one able to hand. set up that Zeus play. Really hitting that Book of Moon was key here for Lars. That was the necessary hit. I mean, it was key for Jeremy to set multiple cards so he'd have a chance to miss with the Cosmic Cyclone. That was a heads-up play from Jeremy, but... I think maybe setting them all at the same time, or you at least set them one, two, three, four, and not have any hesitation on any of them, might have been more to his benefit, because maybe Lars picked up on some of the timing of the way he set his spell and trap cards to decide to go after that specific one. Yeah, there could be, there's a lot of layers to this, because if he just chose to keep those resources in hand and allow Book of Moon to be hit by the Cosmic Cyclone, you can just immediately start your turn with Dark Hole, Activate Birth. True, true. Yep. And now he might lose all his backup plans to that Divine Arsenal Zeus. Because, yeah, Jeremy's sitting on no cards in hand. I think he has a Fenrir, so it's not the oh, worst. Does. Oh, he does. I couldn't see it. Okay, he has a Fenrir. Oh, that's right, because he added it with the Big Bang. It didn't summon it. That's true. So even after the Zeus, not the end of the world for Jeremy, this is just a lot of back and forth in this Kashira Mirror match. Both these players have probably played plenty of Mirror matches on their way here to the finals. Both of them are already guaranteed to represent North America in Japan at the World Championship in a month. So you're going to make sure to stay tuned for that. And now he's going to use Rise Heart's Effect to banish Unicorn, to banish the top three cards out of Jeremy's deck, face down. No, the only thing is, Lars really wants to make as large of a Zeus as he can, because unfortunately, yep. it's not going to be enough to just yep. be able to Zeus once. The Fenrir will be able to just take everything back. So he's going to use Big Eye to take the Shanger Ira, so he'll be able to go into Zeus uh, still. Yep. Shanger Ira is able to attack for zero. Yep. Attacks or no damage. But I think Seize Monster did battle. And now he's going into main phase two. And he's going to put Zeus on top of the big eye. Okay, I like this play. Okay. Because mm -hmm. this is what's going to happen, right? In the standby phase, Shangri is going to activate and Zeus is going to be chained. Yeah. 
And it's not. <laughs> but he did use the Tinker Ira at least. That's interesting here. Because I would assume what he wants to do is clear everything else from the field. He might I'm sorry, he might not think that those face downs are bursts or something. Maybe he's thinking something like infinite permanent or no, oh, see what he's doing burns on the vineyard. What do you what do you think he thinks those face downs are? I guess he assumes they're chainables, but if they were chainables, would no Jeremy have even allowed him to make a Zeus? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So you have to maybe have the soul read that they're spell cards, but the dark hole punishing him for not using the Zeus yet. And now he could detach a material from the Shangri-La, but I don't really see the point. He just could chain the Zeus, but then if he chains the Zeus, he loses that set. Oh, man. We saw it, but we kind of have perfect information, so it's a little easier to see the path to victory. Yeah, okay. I, yeah if he just was able to use a Zeus prior, he would have had access to even just holding Zeus with an infinite permits against the Kashir uh, the Fenrir. But oh, up, allowing everything to go through, Shangri-La is still there. Third? effect. Going to be met with infinite permanence. Then it's going to be an immediate flip of Kashira Birth. Oh, birth effect. Yeah, you know Lars is not feeling good now, seeing that both those face downs are Dark Hole and Birth. You know, if... Uh, I guess it was a bit of a two-way thing. Lars could have set the Infinite Permanence in front of, that, of one of those two sets, just in case it was a set copy of Birth that he knew that Jeremy had. But if it wasn't a copy of Infinite Permanence, he could have like, really backfired on him. That's always the Infinite Permanence game, right? The it could technically go either way, either though. Way. If it wasn't Infinite Permanence that was going to be chained to the Zeus, you could chain Infinite Permanence on his Infinite Permanence, <laughs> assu assuming he committed a monster already. The layers. And now he's going to use that Kastir Theosis, targeting Kastir Unicorn. I think Lars has no cards to his name here. It's just a Shangri-Ra that's protected itself. He is his own zone lock by that Shangri-Ra. Jeremy just has to put <laughs> up the damage at this point. There's something funny about that, of having your, the Singer Ira on your side of the field locking your zone. Mm -hmm. He just has to summon Scareclaw Kastira if he still has access to it. Lars is only at 7,000 from activating that Cosmic Cyclone. Very true. And he's still under the Eradicator. Yeah, any spell he draws the next two turns will go straight to the graveyard. Oh, there's a cop another copy of Kastira Fenrir. Already used its effect this turn, so not going to be too useful. Now he's taking a moment to consider what his next option hmm. is. He's mere moments potentially away from being the North America World Championship Qualifier Champion. I see you, yeah. Making sure, like, you don't make any mistakes here at the finish line. You don't want to slip right before the end. Yeah, you never want to get too comfortable. It's never over until that last life point is depleted. Um. Looks like is that another copy of Birth in the hand? Uh, inner battle. Oh, so he's going to go to battle, attack with Finrear. Yeah, not choosing to use Fenrir's effect here, because, again, there's no point. Uh, and now an Xyz monster has battle. I'll say that's the more beneficial part, that an Xyz monster has battle. It's it doesn't have to be yours. It can be anywhere on the field if you want to go into Zeus. Lots of damage being done. Unicorn being able to go after the Arise Heart in Lars's extra deck. That's going to be banished face down. And I think he's just going to potentially go into Flare Metal again. It's looking like what he's thinking about. Yeah, a little better than a Rise Heart in this position. Red Eyes Flare Metal, and he's going to pass. Let's see what Lars draws. He has to reveal it for Eradicator. Oh, right. yeah. and it's, it's a, a spell, spell card. It's pressing planet, and that's it. it.